In this problem, we have two spheres that are overlapping each other uh, in some, some sort of fashion like you see here. Imagine this is just a cross section. And both of these spheres have uh, equal in magnitude uh, charge density. So this one has a positive charge density and this one has an equal and opposite charge density here. And we're also given that the vector from the positive to the negative uh, center of each sphere is equal to this vector called D, which I should probably put a vector sign here. And our goal is to find the electric field in this region right here. So, and we were also given a hint that uh, we we're supposed to use the answer from problem 2.1, uh, where the uh, we were able to find the electric field uh, somewhere within the uh, um, within a sphere, solid sphere. So what that is is equal to the electric field is equal to one three over epsilon naught, and. Uh, our charge density times the vector uh, r, which goes here, let me write it here, which points from the center of our charge, uh, uh, the center of the sphere, to where we want to evaluate it from. So in our case, we're going to have two separate ones. One where uh, the electric field evaluated for the positive charge, and then one where the electric field is evaluated for the negative charge here. Yeah. So for the negative charge, uh, if we go ahead and, and use our, uh, our value that we got here, we'll see that we have a negative row here times R2. I'll just call that R2 hat. So this is R2. This is R1. I guess I could do positive or negative. And then for the positive one, that would be 1 over 3 epsilon naught times positive row times R1 times the vector, uh, unit vector of R1 to be consistent from here. So that's the... Uh, that's the electric field for within a, a spherical spherical charge here. And so what we want to do is find a total field here because it's the area in here is going to have some contribution from the electric field from this uh, sphere and, the, and a contribution from this sphere. So we're going to use those two vectors uh, to find it. So the way that we do that, so the total, total uh, field, the total field is going to be equal to the sum I guess I could have drawn that a little bit better, but it's going to be equal to the sum of the electric fields, right? And so what we can do is just, thanks to the principal superposition, just add both of these together. So what we have is the E positive plus the uh, E negative, right? And then what we have here is 1 over 3 epsilon naught, just exactly what we wrote here. R1, R2, oops, sorry, that's R1 vector. Minus, since we have a negative charge density here, we just went ahead and pulled that, that negative sign from the uh, charge density out to the front there. And what we're able to do is just do some algebra, just concentrating on the like terms here and just pulling them out front. What we have is 1 over 3 epsilon naught times rho times the quantity of, uh, we'll just go ahead and call this R1 vector because it's both the magnitude and the direction here, and then R2 vector here. And uh, here's the important part of the problem. If we look at R1 and R2 right here, we have these two vectors that are pointing uh, equal and opposite right here. If we subtract those two together, which would be the addition of this negative one, that equals our, uh, our, our D vector right here. So what we can do is we can just look at this and just call this our D vector right here. And then just uh, rewrite this whole thing in white, preferably, times a row times our d vector right here. And uh, that's our answer right here. That's our answer for the total field within this overlap section. And just for a sanity check right here, if we uh, if these two circles were, uh, were brought together right here, if we just move this circle here, the total d vector wouldn't be uh, um, this big thing anymore. The total d vector would be zero because the total distance between those two spheres, in this case right here, would uh, would be zero, and then so this whole thing would go zero, that which means that the all the positive and the negative uh, charge densities are overlapping, and the whole electric field within the overlap region goes to zero. So which seems to make sense here. So that's a good sanity check for this problem.